I will go to the altar of God. To God I have seen joy. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. During this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's calling to intensify our struggle against sin, death, and the devil. All that prevents us from trusting in God and loving each other. Since it is our intention to receive the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ on this night, when he instituted this blessed meal for our salvation, it is proper that we complete our Lenten discipline by diligently examining ourselves, as St. Paul urges us to do. This holy sacrament has been instituted for the special comfort of those who are troubled because of their sin and who humbly confess their sins, fear God's wrath, and hunger and thirst for righteousness. But when we examine our hearts and consciences, we find nothing in us but sin and death from which we are incapable of delivering ourselves. Therefore, our Lord Jesus Christ has had mercy on us. For our benefit, he became man so that he might fulfill for us the whole will and law of God, and to deliver us, took upon himself our sin and the punishment we deserve. So that we may more confidently believe this, and be strengthened in the faith and in holy living, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. It is as if he said, I became man, and all that I do and suffer is for your good. As a pledge of this, I give you my body to eat. In the same way also he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Again, it is as if he said, I have had mercy on you by taking into myself all your iniquities. I give myself into death, shedding my blood, to obtain grace and forgiveness of sins, and to comfort and establish the New Testament, which forgives, which for, gives forgiveness and everlasting salvation. As a pledge of this, I give you my blood to drink. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup, confidently believing this word and promise of Christ, dwells in Christ and Christ in him and has eternal life. We should also do this in remembrance of him, showing his death, that he was delivered for our offenses and raised for our justification, giving him our most heartfelt thanks. We take up our cross and follow him, and according to his commandment, love one another as he has loved us. As our Lord on this night exemplified this love by washing his disciples' feet, so we, by our words and actions, serve one another in love. For we are all one bread and one body, even as we are all partakers of this one bread and drink from the one cup. For just as the one cup is filled with the wine of many grapes and one bread made from countless grains, so also we, being many, are one body in Christ. Because of him, we love one another, not only in word, but in deed and in truth. May the almighty and merciful God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by his Holy Spirit, accomplish this in us. Amen. Having heard the word of God, let us confess our sins, imploring God our Father for the sake of his Son, Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor and miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, 
and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. God, be merciful to you and strengthen your faith. Amen. Do you believe that the forgiveness I speak is not my forgiveness, but God's? Yes. Let it be done for you as you believe. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our lord jesus christ he who calls you is faithful he will surely do it go in peace Amen. the lord be with you, and also with you. let us pray O lord in this wondrous sacrament you have left us a remembrance of your passion. Grant that we may so receive the sacred mystery of your body and blood, that the fruits of your redemption may continually be manifested in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The Old Testament reading is from Exodus, the 12th chapter. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, every man shall take a lamb according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor shall take according to the number of persons. According to what each can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month when the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the flesh that night, roasted on the fire. With unleavened bread and bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted, its head with its legs and its inner parts. And you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. In this manner you shall eat it, with your belt fastened, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And on all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I shall take the land of Egypt. This day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord. Throughout your generations, as a statute forever, you shall keep it as a feast. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. 
For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of profaning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. That is why many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judged ourselves truly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. This is the word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 13th chapter. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and, taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, The one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, Not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet, and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. 
Tonight, Jesus gives a precious gift to his church, his supper, the supper of his body and blood, the very same body and blood that would in just hours now hang on the cross, the very same body and blood that Jesus first gives as food and drink to his disciples, for he knows they need it. He knows we need it. In a world gone mad and steeped in sin, we need it. In bodies filled with sin and dying, we need it. We need him in us to give us his life, to give us his life in the forgiveness of our sins. And so he promises to be with us and feed us as often as we do this, in, with, and under simple bread and wine. He's not just in heaven, watching from a distance. He's not present with us in the way that he is present everywhere, a way unavailable and unknowable to us. He's not present here only symbolically or in our act of remembering. No, the same body and blood that walked on this earth, the same body and blood that touched the sick and healed them, the same body and blood whose voice raised the dead, the same body and blood that ate and drank with sinners, the same body and blood that hung on the cross was laid in the tomb and then himself rose from the dead, that body and blood is here for you. To feed you, to touch you and heal you, to forgive you, to give you life. Because he knows that you need it. You need him. And tonight we remember this precious gift of Jesus to his church. We remember that this was so important to Jesus that he gave it on the night in which he was betrayed. And we remember that it is so important for us that Jesus instructed his disciples to keep doing this, keep eating and drinking as often as you do this. This was not a a once-a-year commemoration like the Passover meal that we heard about from Exodus. 
No, this is much more than a memorial. This is much more than a reenactment. This is the real thing. The real body and blood. Real food and real drink. Real life and forgiveness. Real communion with God. And so as, as often as you need it, He is here for you. As often as you want it, He is here for you. As often as you hunger and thirst for God, He is here for you. Do not delay. Do not neglect. But come and receive Him who is here to give you life. Take eat. Take drink. But is this eating and drinking really that important? As important as I'm making it out to be? Consider the life of every living thing. Without food and drink, we are going to die. Maybe sooner, maybe later. But without food and drink, we cannot live. The same is true for you and I, spiritually. We need the, fear, the spiritual food and drink given to us by Christ and his word and in his word joined to the physical elements of this sacrament. We need the nourishment, strength, forgiveness, and life here given to us without which we would die. For without his forgiveness, our sin will consume us. Without his life, death will destroy us. And without his salvation, eternal spiritual death awaits us. But connected to Christ, through his Holy Spirit in word and sacrament, we live. He feeds us with all that we need, knowing that the one who wants us to stay away, to doubt the reality of the supper, to question the efficacy of the supper, namely Satan, has been defeated for us. His accusations and charges against us of our unworthiness, of our sin, of our not being good enough to receive such life from God, all has been silenced by Christ on the cross. And Christ's death and resurrection has ensured that his food and drink, his body and blood would be here for us always and will never be taken away. And so as often as you need it, he is here for you. As often as you want it, he is here for you. As often as you hunger and thirst for God, he is here for you. Take eat, take drink. Now, is it true that there are times when we do not hunger and thirst for God's food? No desire for his life and forgiveness and salvation and strength? Sadly, it's true. You know it from your own life. But this, too, is a trick and deception of the devil. For if he could not convince God to remove the means of grace for you, he wants to convince you that you don't need it or that there are other sources of spiritual food and drink just as satisfying, just as good, just as fulfilling. But it's not true. In fact, just the opposite is true. For as Luther once remarked, if you feel no hunger and thirst for God's food and drink, it is not a sign that you don't need it, but a sign of just how much sin and death and devil are taking hold of you. It is a sign of how far gone we are. So do not trust your thoughts or your feelings, your thoughts which may tell you that you are doing so well that you do not need this food and drink so much, or your thoughts that tell you that you are doing so poorly 
that you are not worthy of this food and drink. Do not listen to your feelings, which may tell you that you are full enough or that you only need to eat and drink once in a while or that this is only for others who don't doubt so much or struggle so much or sin as much as you. Do not listen to any of that. Listen and cling instead to the word of God, the words of Christ given to you when he gave you this food and drink. His word which said that this is for you, you personally, for he knows we need it. And oh, how much we need it. And so, mere hours before he goes to his death, before he ascends the cross with your sin, to hang between God and you as your substitute, as your payment, he gives this gift as the means to give to you what he is about to earn for you. Food for your soul. Take, eat, take, drink. His body and blood for the forgiveness of your sins, his body and blood for the strengthening of your faith, his body and blood to give you life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Church of Christ, that through this sacrament and the proclamation of his death, Christ's way may be known on earth and his saving power among all nations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For renewed confidence in the cleansing of our baptism, that we would seek the Lord without fear and find a place at his table, let us pray to the Lord. For the young men of the church, that God would inspire them to godly service and a strong witness to Christ's atoning blood, which has saved them. Let us pray to the Lord. For hum humility and selflessness, according to the pattern of Christ, that in our vocations we would follow his example of self-sacrifice. Let us pray to the Lord. For our leaders, that God would give them wisdom and courage to serve his word in the punishment of wrong, the promotion of good, and the protection of the weak. Let us pray to the Lord. For mothers with child and the children in their womb, let none would dishonor the Lord's sacred gift of life. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have requested our prayers and those we name in our hearts, that God would grant relief to the suffering, comfort to the grieving, and peace to the dying, let us pray to the Lord, Lord that the blood of Jesus would be upon us and our children to cleanse us from sin and bestow his new an eternal covenant, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Gracious God, in your holy supper, you give us a foretaste of the feast to come. By your word and spirit, unite in true faith those who receive your Son's body and blood this day, that they may proclaim Christ's death until he comes. For you alone with the Son and the Spirit are one God, now and forever.
The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross, that where death arose, their life also might rise again, and that the serpent who overcame by the tree of the garden might likewise by the tree of the cross be overcome. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.